Hi, it's Julian, and in this video, we're continuing our deep dive into creating accessible websites. We will be specifically looking at fonts when designing accessible sites and the considerations you will need to be aware of. There's been an explosion of fonts over the last decade. We have moved from pixelated fonts on the screen to having thousands upon thousands of options. And now more than ever, we use these fonts on websites just like we've been using on posters and books over the years. So what are the different font categories? Well, as a quick overview, we have serif fonts. These are the traditional newspaper type fonts where a stroke is regularly attached to a larger or thicker stroke. We have sans serif fonts which are far more uniform, so much less thickness change through a stroke and are often bigger fonts as a whole. Then we have script fonts which are what most of us would think when we think about calligraphy. These have a lot of embellishments through their stroke and like the serif have a lot of thickness stroke changes through the letter form. Finally we have display fonts. The real difference with these is that they're designed to be big. These are for your posters or for your names of companies. They shouldn't really be used as reading text, more for titles. There are a lot of further subdivisions, but for the purposes of this video, these should be enough. However, if you want us to go through and kind of dive into the reads of fonts, do let us know in the comments. There is a fantastic talk by the BBC and Dalton Mag, which I'll pop a link in the description below. In it, they discuss their recent work on the relatively new BBC font Wreath. At the beginning of the talk, they introduce a really interesting element of accessible design that is often dismissed. As we mentioned in our previous video, accessibility is often broken down into purely functional requirements. But for us, it needs to be more than this tick box exercise. In the talk, they discuss the idea of being emotionally resonant with the user. And while we're often talking about services that the user has to use, there is still a need for the design and font selection to be appealing to the reader. And it is this balance between emotional resonance and functionality that we'll be looking at throughout this series. Within the BBC's research, they looked at a number of different fonts for those that have no visual impairments right through to those that have severe visual impairments. What they found is interesting. They found the most accessible type of fonts was a sans serif. While I think we would all agree with this, I can't help thinking if the question was asked 30 years ago, whether the response would be the same. For example, a font that ranked incredibly highly within their test was San Francisco Pro. If you don't know the font, then I bet the majority of you look at that font nearly every day. That's because it's Apple's house font. So I wonder if a font that is almost identical to Helvetica, but scores much better, is it just the font or is it also the familiarity of that font? Do we and have we just got used to sans serifs in our daily lives? I think this needs more research and hopefully someone is looking into this. If anyone does know, if anyone is doing this kind of research, do drop us a comment below. So as well as sans serif scoring higher than serifs, there are a few other elements that seem to contribute positively to legibility. Fonts with an above average letter spacing helped reduce letters blending into each other and forming other letters. This seemed to make a big difference on words such as kernel and surname, where the, as you can see, the R and the N kind of start merging and becoming an M. Alongside this, within the sans serif family, there's also found a humanist style of sans serif was more legible. So what is humanist? Well, we have a grotesque sans serif font and a humanist sans serif font on the screen. And you should be able to see the difference around how the letters end. Instead of coming back and almost returning into the rest of the letter, like a grotesque, a humanist font feels more like someone has written that letter, with the end often leading away from the rest of the letter. Within the BBC talk, there was a brief discussion around fonts that have been bespokely created with accessibility in mind. Fonts such as Open Dyslexia and Dyslexi were found to have increased accessibility, but the argument was that the style and design of the font might not emotionally resonate with the user. However, there are fonts out there that have been specifically designed for people with reading issues that also have a design quality. Fonts such as FSME, where the concept is around moving away from mirrored letters, 
So in this case, the B, D, Q, and P are all slightly different and differentiate by different descenders or ascenders. So we spoke about the font itself and letter spacing. Now it comes down to line height. As we mentioned before, different fonts are used for different things. If we think back to the different types of fonts, there are fonts called display fonts that will often be used for headlines with body copy being a totally different font below. A good example of this would be a magazine or a newspaper. In the same way, we have these similar scenarios on a web page, mostly when we're looking at teasers and general hierarchy of a page. So depending on how impactful we want the teaser or page to be, we can look at different fonts to use in different contexts. But as with letter spacing, we will need to also consider line height. So this is the difference between the lines of the text. So for reading purposes, when we have a lot of text, we are likely looking at quite a gap, often around 1.3 times the font size itself. This provides a nice balance to allow for the descenders of the letters like G and P to have enough space and not interact with any ascenders or capital letters. But then this line height can be different when it comes to titles. Often due to the size of these fonts, we can reduce the line height down to provide a better reading experience. So in summary, try out a few fonts to see what works for your scenario. Look for sans serif fonts that are humanist in type. Make sure they have good letter spacing and use fonts for the situations they are designed. So what do you think? Is there anything else you would add? when considering fonts for your next web project. I hope you enjoyed the video. Next video, we'll be looking at layout and how font merges with layout, image, and contrast. Thanks for watching and see you in the next video.